See if you can put yourself on mute. Right, will I know? Uh, let's do it. Uh, Namaste, everyone. Welcome to Hindi University. Um, really excited to have all of you this Sunday. Um, as you know, my name is Ashutosh, and we meet each Sunday at 8 a.m. US specific time, which is time on the, the west coast of the US. And for those of you who are new to Hindi University, you can learn more about us by you know going to our YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash Hindi University. And you'll find all the, the previously recorded videos. Um, if you're interested in joining the live session that we have, you can get all the details on this page, which is tiny.cc slash Hindi University. And again, like the courses here are in the videos are pretty structured on this page. You can get details about how to join the live classes. You can find out details about all the practice sessions we have. And now we have over like, you know, seven plus practice sessions throughout the week for different levels. So if you are completely beginners, you can join the Pingu Learns Hindi. There are two practice sessions for it. Similarly, if you're advanced, you can join the Usha Jain. So all the books as well as like different, you know, um, conversational practice groups are there for you to, to benefit with, okay? Um, now, as you know that we've been covering uh, this class, Sunday classes, you know, we have divided into pretty much two different segments. The first half, it's really geared towards uh, beginners so that beginners can also catch up and learn about how to, to talk in Hindi as well as like ask basic and common questions. And the second half of the class is more towards intermediate plus because we have a group of students who are pretty advanced. So we want to make sure that they can also make progress along the way. Uh, so, but again, like all in all, even if you sort of beginners people, if you want to kind of like join the second half, that's completely okay. You know, you will be able to kind of like see all the concepts are, you know, coming together. Um, the format of the class is pretty straightforward. We'll start very simple and um, we'll practice the simple concept again and again, and then we'll add some complexity to it. Okay. Um, as far as the beginners books are concerned, uh, we are catching up on two books. First one is Pingu Learns Hindi and the second one is uh, Elementary Hindi Elementary Hindi by Professor Richard DeLacy. Uh, he's a professor at the Harvard University for Hindi language. So we are following these two books. You can get all the details about the books on the page tiny.cc Hindi University. And for the Intermediate Plus, it's a pretty blended curriculum. Uh, blended curriculum that we have um, and some of the, the the in fact most of the notes are prepared by me uh, similarly we as you know that we're preparing a, a, a Hindi story along the way right so you will see that a story of a, a fisherman Ron you know we have been making progress on that so you find the story also on this page similarly so some of the the references from Professor Usha Jain books, Kavita Kumar's book, and miscellaneous other books that, that we have done in the past. Okay. Um, with that being said, um, um, we will finish chapter six of elementary Hindi book. Uh, and that's, as I said, like the book from a book of uh, Professor Richard Delacy. Um, so far, we've done multiple things. And in, in this chapter, Richard Delacy is finishing up with a very basic concept. How do you ask someone's age? Okay. There are couple of ways of doing that. So we'll try to simplify it throughout the class. And uh, not only you'll be able to ask like someone's age, we'll try to see what other things you can do with this pattern. Okay. Um, so let's get started. Hopefully all of you can hear me okay. And at, all, at any moment, as I said, like, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to to ask questions. If you have it, most likely other people will have the similar questions, so don't be shy. Okay. So the first thing is like that Richard Lacey covers is asking someone's age. Okay. Uh, just in just like in English, Hindi also has the two most common way of doing that, right? So let's see. Um, I'm going to put you on spot, <laughs> Rita Ji, because it's why. Um, in English, what, how would you approach, like, if you want to sort of like find out someone's age? 
In English, we would either say, how old are you? Okay. That's the most common. How old are you? And? Well, well, some people say, what is your age? What is your age? Okay. That's the most common one. What is your age? Hindi has a similar structure. Okay. Um, we'll start with this one. How do you deconstruct this one? Help us with this one. You have, you know, I assume that at least everyone who's joining has some familiarity with Hindi. But even if not, you we'll try to kind of like make sure that you can follow it. So, Ritaji, again, um, how will you start with this one? What is your age? Um, I would start with uh, your age, what is, and I would probably use two because I think if you're asking someone's age, you might not be formal. Okay. Umare. Mm -hmm. They got age, um, um. That's right. Yeah. Kya, kya hai. Okay, so you said you're gonna use you is you don't want to go too formal, so you're gonna say tum. It's you. Or you can say ap if you want to use ap, but yeah. Yes. For tumare. Tumari. Okay. It's tumhari. Okay, tumhari, tumhara, or tumhare. Okay. But you said tumhari. Why did you say tumhari? Because age. Yeah. Because age is? Age is feminine. Okay, very good. So because age is feminine, you are saying Tumhari. Okay? And uh, if it is anything that is followed by this, if it is masculine, you would say Tumhara. Tumhara. Okay, very good. So Tumhari age and what in Hindi is interrogative, that is? Kya. Kya and then? Hey. Okay, Tumhari age kya hai? That's what you would say. We'll try to do the other one as well, but right now let's stick with this formula. Tumari age kya hai? And this is again like building on top of your common introduction. You are introducing yourself and you want to know about uh, details about someone else, right? Make it formal. Can you say something about English? Say it one more time, yes. In English, in mm -hmm. certain circles, asking mm -hmm. someone their age, especially uh -huh. a woman, is very very rude yeah yeah totally it's even in so it's... okay yeah. oh so you're telling us how to be as rude in hindi as we are in english okay fine carry on yeah okay so well but... in, in hindi sometimes people do ask age i mean it's just it's a little different even on resumes when i when i'm hiring people in india they put their age on their resume yeah. you would never do that in the u.s <laughs> yeah that's true yeah. Let's make it formal, Rita Ji. Instead of Tumhari, it could be? Uh, ap, uh, apko. I don't remember. No, it's good. I'm rusty. <laughs> no, so just like you said you, you said Tum, instead of Tum, it's Aap. Yeah, so it'd be, it would be Aap. Okay, very good. So Aapki, H, Kya, kya hai. hai. Okay. Now replace age, as you said, the word for age is? I, I believe it's, uh, is it um? Or... Umar, yeah, Umar, right? yeah. Umar. So you have U and then V, uh, sorry, yeah. Mom with the R, Umar. So it's a half R sound, okay, Umar. Aapki Umar kya hai? Um, that's the most common one. And then the second one, which is a little bit more formal is, anyone else? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Right. Are you? Right. Are you? So you have a uh, with a, uh, and then here uh, with the o sound. Aapki are you kya hai? Okay. You will see this one is mostly when you're filling out some hospital for a form, etc. That's when you will see the this word. Otherwise, the most common is aapki umr kya hai? Okay. Um, you someone mentioned like it may con be considered rude for women. That's correct. But it's pretty common in, in the cases like, you know, when you're meeting someone's mm -hmm. like a family and then they have a children, it's pretty common to, to ask them like, you know, what's your daughter's age or son's age, especially if they're younger, because if you have younger children, it's, you know, you, just like in US also, it, it, like, it's very common for, for people to ask us like, when I'm with my two children and if they see, okay, these are like, you know, similar age as our kids, you know, then, then they kind of like, you know, socialize, right? So, aapki umr kya hai aur aapki age kya hai, okay? So, the pattern there is, even though we are talking about age, 
I do want to take this opportunity to kind of discuss about how you can use this pattern to ask for other thing as well, right? So the whole, the pattern here is aapki kya hai. I hope everyone is clear so far. If there are any question, you let me know. Okay. Now let's say you want to know about someone's qualification. Okay. I want to ask someone who has not participated so far. You want to ask about someone's qualification. Now it may be very broad statement, but for the sake of example, right? I mean, so let's say um, who would like to share this one? Uh, Jackie G, you want to participate on this one? You, uh, how will you, you can use English word. It's very simple. Instead of age, you would say? Uh, uh, you want to know what the qualification. So, aapki? Aapki qualification kya hai? Very good. Aapki, that's it. Oh, no, no, no. Aapki, huh? aapki qualification kya hai? Okay. And the Hindi word for qualification, who would like to try that? I'm sure some of you already know about it. Yogyata. Very good. It's Yogyata. Right? So it's yog is probably the very common word you must have heard of. Yog. And then there's a year. Yogyata. Okay. So year with O. Half ga. Year and the Aapki Yogita Kya Hai. Right? Any questions so far? Let me take a pause because you know I want to make sure everyone is coming along. Um Ashitash, can I just ask you? Um, so your yogita is feminine, is that right? So that's why you're saying key. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Thank so you. So so far I'm just using this pattern because you know we said aapki umr kya hai. Yeah. Right after that we'll do aapka as well, right? So the question was why did we use aapki? Because just like age, you have umr or ayu, those are considered feminine. Okay. Yogita is also considered feminine. That's why aapki yogita kya hai. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Any other words you can think of that you would put in here? Again, as you, you are introducing yourself and uh, you want to know about others as well in the basic conversation. I have a quick, quick, quick question. Um, Umrah is feminine, but then I thought mostly feminine things would be like Umri. Is this just an exception? So what does the Umri mean? Like for example, you're saying you want to change it? Is that the... the, the... Uh, not that I want to change it, but I'm just... I thought that um, feminine words, not always, but generally, if... Oh, be, I see. End with so it's like, e. I see. I. So your larka, larki, is that what you're thinking? Like there's an E sound on larka? Yeah, there's it, the letter I making the sound of E. Umri. Yeah. No. But this umra, but it's still feminine. That's right. That's right. So this is still A word ending. The noun is still ending with A. Um, so it's it's not really A. I'm writing it in Roman already. That's why it may be looking at like, you know. Uh, it's just really umra. Umr, that's right. So if I yeah, remove, okay. you have a sound in it, umr, uh, it's only ending with a from that perspective. Umr. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then it about is, it being feminine, that's just one of those weird things that we have to file right. in our brain that we wouldn't otherwise know. Yeah. It's like each base consonant in Hindi has like an implied a sound. You, you know, like ma, k. All yeah. of you know, there is an a uh, sound to it, right? Right, right, right. So that's that's what it is. Um, okay, okay. Um, yeah, awesome. Good question. Anyone else? So we said, aapki age, ayu kya hai? Aapki umr kya hai? Aapki qualification kya hai? What other basic nouns you can think of, which are feminine, which you would ask during the introduction? Um, Ashuji. Um. Uh, how would you, could you say, um, apki ya apka kaam kya hai? Okay, that's right, you can say that. Okay. But that's apka. Apka. Yeah, we'll come to that as well. But let's say, think of feminine. in a very basic setting, you want to know what's your language. Apki pasha kya hai? Very good, right? Apki pasha 
I mean again there are other ways of saying it will are consi bhasha bolte hain we will come to that as well but right now with this pattern the, the point is not to figure out multiple different ways but let's say if you just know one way how you sort of like you know progress on that right aapki bhasha kya hai what other things you can think of now curry ha huh? right now curry one more time bade now curry now curry like job naukri okay okay aapki naukri kya hai okay it sounds a little bit um, like you know uh, i mean again people will understand you when you ask them aapki naukri kya hai you know the, the common would be aap kahan kaam karte hain where do you work okay that's a common way but like i think what you so what's your job right um aapka kaam kya hai i would say that's what you know people would so ka will be there okay um tabiyat okay tabiyat is that masculine okay no it's feminine okay. what would you say you would say what or how when you want to know about someone health okay so here how yeah how that's right just like in english hindi also you will say how right so aapki tabiyat which interrogative will be there yes so, yeah very good what is kya how is kaisi just like kaisa kaisi and kaise right so because tabiyat as you said is um, feminine aapki tabiyat kaisi hai right uh, what about like, let's say you go to uh, a famous restaurant okay uh, you want to know about their speciality okay uh or you meeting someone and you want to know about their speciality so aapki and we'll do the hindi word as well and if you don't know hindi you can simply say aapki speciality kya hai okay what is the hindi word for it i think it's, i don't know is it the vishata yeah 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 visheshta right so it's a uh, Yeah, so it's a little bit hard. So you have a yeah. verb with e, you have a sh with a, and then you have a different kind of a sh, and then t with a. Visheshta, right? आपकी विशेषता क्या है? Um, if you are completely beginner, you can still stick with speciality. Um, the reason I say that because like you know the pronunciation for this it comes gradually, and you want to make sure you know you when you use it, it's basically. the level of your like current conversational hindi so that way when you are saying it it will come across very naturally okay so either aapki speciality kya hai or you know you can say in pronoun i am going to write it down so vishesh it's it's a uh, you know you will you may come across this as a name also a lot of you know uh, uh, guys can have this name vishesh special right vishesh ta speciality vishesh is special and then ta visheshta aapki visheshta kya hai okay um now we ask about your age in the same thing you know uh, let's say you want to know someone's daughter's age younger daughter how would you ask that question someone who's completely new not tried it before let's see barbara ji you're not completely new you've been joining in but how would you ask someone's daughter's age आपकी बेटी हाँ उम्र है बेटी ओके सो यू से बेटी एंड देन उम्र व्हाट अदर आपकी बेटी उम्र है हाँ दिस इन इंग्लिश यू आर से योर डॉटर्स एज दिस अपोस्टोफी एस सो अपोस्टोफी एस इन हिंदी इज Remember Ron's daughter. Yeah, yeah very good. So, Aki, you're spelling that the the post position you said Aki, Betty. Which post position will you use in this one? Ron's daughter. I was trying to give someone else a chance, so. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. 
<laughs> Barbara ji, which 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 one do you think? How about this? The possible options are ka, k, and ki. Now tell me. Aapki. Right. Why don't someone else right now and help Barbara ji? Aapki. Beti. Ki. ki. Yeah, very good. Aapki beti ki umr kya hai? Yeah, what's your daughter's age? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, give me just one minute. Right. Okay. Um, okay. 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 If it is not daughter, if it is even uh, like, you know, son's age, that would be. Let's say who would try this one. Delia ji. Let's try it out. You want to know what's your son's age? Aapka beta ka umra kya hai? Okay, so a k. Ah, bete. Hmm? Ki? Uh, ki umra kya hai? Aapki bete ki umra kya hai? Amazing. Right? Okay. Good thing is you identify that it's not about who is here. It's really about like, you know, this being the feminine. Aapke bete ki umr kya hai? And why did we use aapke? Because your son is aapka beta. Right? Someone because, would ask. Huh? And because uh, of the post position. Yeah, because of it's, this. It turns in the oblicus. Very good. Right? So aapka becomes aapke and beta becomes? Bete. Very good. Aapke bete ki umr kya hai? Right? So this is still the basic formula, you know, uh, that we use. Now I have some more. And then we'll switch to um, to a different way of asking how much age. Okay. So so far it is aapki, and now let's say I have some more examples for you, um, which is basically instead of aapki, you have aapka dash kya hai. Right. Uh, some of them are very common. You probably have heard me say aapka naam kya hai. That's what's your name. That's a very common one that you would ask when you're meeting someone. Um, someone said calm as well, like you know, calm kya hai. Okay, I'll give you that. Like you can say that as well. Aapka kaam kya hai? What's your work or what's your job? <clears throat> um, um, something a little bit different, which is basically um, what's your level? Let's say you want to you are talking to someone in Hindi, and uh, both of the you and the other them they're learning a new language, okay. Let's say you're learning French and they're also learning French and you want to know what's your current level or what's your level, right? How would you say aapka, either you can just say the in Hindi word, English word, aapka level kya hai? And the word for level in Hindi is? Is it like a staan? Staan huh? or staan? Okay, staan is one. So you have a half sir. Th yeah. and uh, stan is more like a position. Oh, okay. Okay. Huh? Which one? Okay, there's some the noise, so I'm gonna have to um, level. So you, either you can say after level kya hai, the other one is th. Okay, so you have a half sir, okay, and then th and with star. So it's, it, it appears like star, but it's not star. Don't read it as star. star. It's rather half star. So star, right? <clears throat> Somebody try completely new. Try saying it. Unmute yourself. I'm going to ask some people to, to say it so that way I can validate it that you are saying it. JDG, try saying it star. Um, star. Star. Okay. Um, so what I hear is the t sound. Okay, it's the t st t where my tongue it kind of touches the back of my upper teeth. St yeah. Stir. Try one more time, JDG. Stir. Yes, very good. One more time, louder. Stir. 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 Okay, half sir. Stir. stir. Very good. Stir. Yeah, stir. 
सो आपका स्तर क्या है ओके इधर यू विल से दैट और यू आपका लेवल क्या है वॉट योर लेवल ओके एनी वन एल्स वुड लाइक टू ट्राई वॉट अदर थिंग्स वुड यू पुट हियर आपका नाम क्या है आपका काम क्या है एंड देन एज यू आर लर्निंग अबाउट देम लर्निंग ए लैंग्वेज आपका लेवल क्या है राय ओ आपकी ओके वेरी गुड सो आपकी राय वेरी गुड सो राय इज फेमिन वॉट इज राय ओपिनियन ओपिनियन वेरी गुड ओपिनियन गुड वर्ड वेरी आपकी ओपिनियन क्या है वॉट्स योर ओपिनियन एन यू वॉन्ट टू नो सम एश जी गो फॉर इट Oh, it's me. It's me. I'm one of the boys. Oh. <laughs> uh, Pata, your address? Address? Address. Okay. So, your Pata, what is very good? So, your Pata, your Pata, what is? Right, Pata, address. So, you see, it's a basic pattern, but you can really know about a lot of things, right? Okay, Dolly, Ji, go for it. Dharm. Dharm. धर्म या इफ यू वांट टू नो अबाउट समन रिलीजन यू कैन से आपका धर्म क्या है ओके व्हाट इज विचार ओके विचार क्या है वेरी गुड व्हाट इज विचार एज आईडिया ओके आपका विचार व्हाट आईडिया और व्हाट्स योर थॉट विचार आईडिया थॉट What is? आपका प्रोफेशन विच प्रोफेशन गुड वन यू कैन से आपका प्रोफेशन क्या है ओके आपका प्रोफेशन क्या है यू कैन ऑल्सो से आपका यू नो इट्स अ मोर फॉर्मल वन बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो सम पर्पज राइट इधर यू कैन से आपका पर्पज क्या है इंग्लिश वर्ड यू कैन पुट इन दैट कंप्लीटली फाइन इफ यू आर बिगिन In the Hindi word for that is maksad. Maksad, very good, Vidya ji. And the other one is kya irada hai? Okay, irada. Okay, so maksad. And then you said the word irada. Irada is uh, intention, right? E vidra and the irada intention. What's your intention? Udesh. Udesh. Okay. Very good. Purpose is also Udesh. So it's a long word. I'll try to break it down. So it's Ud Desh Year. Can you try pronouncing it? Udesh. Udesh Year. One more time. Udesh Year. Udesh Year. Okay. Udesh Year. Okay. Udesh Year. Awesome. Right. So this is sort of one way of asking someone age, but we. Took a detour, and we use the same um, pattern to know about other things, and that's what uh, Richard De Lacy covers in Chapter Six. Okay, the other ways he says it's uh, it's not one-to-one -one translation from from English to Hindi, but I'll try to break it down for you. Okay. So uh, Richard De Lacy says that basically. as you know or like when you want to know how many and how much how many or how much the the hindi word in english you can have how many and how much but hindi is sort of kitna kitni or kitne you know that right kitna kitni and kitne that's what you would say when you say how many years how many years that would be which one should i use years is saal saal very good the daily which one will i use with that i one. would say kitne saal very good kitne saal okay how many years okay now when you say of how many years Of how many years? Which fourth position will I use? Of how many years? Say. Okay. कितने साल? Okay. Let's say. I thought it's called. Okay. 
आप कितने साल के हैं वेरी गुड राइट सो इट्स बेसिकली का के और की राइट सो कितने साल के राइट सो इट्स रियली लाइक द ट्रांसलेशन और इफ यू वांट टू डू वन ऑन वन दिस इज हाउ इट वुड बी यू नो सेइंग इन 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 इंग्लिश बट इन हिंदी यू विल से बेसिकली आप कितने साल के हैं आप कितने साल के हैं of how many years are you of is nothing but like you know the post position ka ke or ki ki hai aap kitne saal ke hain okay um similarly if you want to know aapka beta <coughs> kitne saal ka hai aur aapki beti kitne saal ki hai okay aur sara kitne saal ki hai john kitne saal ka hai okay i'm going to write it down i'm going to ask some of you to just replace the the subject and and try to make a pattern out of it so it becomes like a natural you don't have to think about the grammar it just comes naturally so i said aap kitne saal ke hain okay that's the thing i want you to all of you to try it out how about this i don't put anyone on spot i give you some time you replace up with someone else okay uh, either name or someone's son daughter uncle aunt parent whoever okay and i i encourage all of you to try it out because that's the way i would know whether i'm going too fast or too slow okay and if everyone is coming along or not let's see okay um So we tried the first method. Now let's try this one. आप कितने साल के हैं? Replace it. The ask is use this for other subjects. Change the subject. And the K won't change, right? Won't change, right? That's a that's a that's a quiz part. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So Go. Asu G, Asu yeah. G, uh, should it be Hey or Hain? so aap yeah you can if you want to put ultra respect like you know hey hey usually for plural right i mean like you know if you're asking a single person it's hey if it is many people or if you want to put extra respect then you know you generally for them as many i thought aap was always plural yeah 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 so i mean let's say hey <clears throat> Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see if you guys are putting in chat. Let's see. Who would like to go? Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. Aap ki gadi. Okay. You can use pet also, by the way. Okay. Because a lot of some of you may have pet, so you can use pet as well. ओके okay. आपका दोस्त कितने साल का है प्रिंस चार्ल्स कितने साल का है ओके okay. <laughs> आपके आपके बेटे कितने साल के हैं ओके okay. आपका कुत्ता कितने साल का है अमेजिंग ओके कीप दम कमिंग आई वॉन्ट मेक श्योर दैट एवरी वन तुम्हारी माता कितने साल की है ओके अमेजिंग कीप इट कमिंग Okay. What else? Tar Aliya ji, what do you think? I know you hate me putting you on spot, but let's try it out. We how many years old are you? Okay. Do you want me to say something? Yeah, just say it, Aliya ji. I don't know. Uh, Usha, how many years old is she? Very good. Usha, how many years old is she? Okay. Amazing. Jackie ji said, "We how many years old are you?" Okay. ओके राधिका जी सर आपके कितने बच्चे हैं ओके आपके केलू नो कितने व्हाट इज दैट मेडल जी आई होप आई एम सेइंग इट नेम करेक्टली व्हिच वन इज इट 
के खिलौन खिलौने ओके आप खिलौने आई सी ओके व्हाट यू सेइंग ओके टॉयज ओके गॉड इट अनीता जी प्रोफेसर अनीता आपकी बिल्ली कितने साल की है आपकी बिल्ली कितने साल की है राइट ओके सो फॉर सम ऑफ देम यू विल नॉट से आपका घर कितने साल का है um as opposed to saying that aapka ghar you know either when when was it constructed kab bana hai okay you will say aapka ghar kab bana hai or you know aapka ghar kitna purana hai i mean in english it become more like rude like how old is the in hindi it doesn't really when you say it doesn't come across as like in in a, in a negative way. when you say aapka ghar kitna purana hai like it's not like really like oh you are like you know ask me in a bad way it comes it's it's okay to ask that way aapka ghar kitna purana hai okay um okay awesome anyone else has any comments or question before i go to the next section no questions anyone all right so usually i have the the comprehension for uh, advance this time I just took the comparison as it is from Richard Delisi in the chapter six. Okay, so the idea here is like even the beginners should feel that they can follow the conversation, the basic, very very basic sentence structure. Okay, so I'm going to read this paragraph. Okay, for intermediate plus, it should be a a cake walk. For beginners, I hope you will be able to listen to everything and then make sense of it. So I'm going to read it slowly and I'm going to read fast. Okay. It's basically Deepak's family um, from chapter six in the Richard Delisi book, where Deepak is introducing his family. Okay, I'm going to read story and then fast. So Deepak says, "यह मेरा परिवार है." Okay, यह मेरी बहन है. इसका नाम वृंदा है. और मेरे एक बड़े भाई है. इनका नाम संजीव है ये मेरे दादा दादी हैं ये मेरे माँ बाप इलाहाबाद में हैं मेरे माँ बाप इलाहाबाद में हैं और ये मेरे मामा जी हैं और ये मेरे मामा जी है मेरी उम्र बाईस साल की है मेरी उम्र बाईस साल की है और कविता भी बाईस साल की है आपकी उम्र क्या है कविता मेरी बहुत अच्छी दोस्त है कविता की कोई बहन नहीं है ओके अनमोन सही वन मोर टाइम ओके यह मेरा परिवार है यह मेरी बहन है इसका नाम वृंदा है और मेरे एक बड़े भाई हैं इनका नाम संजीव है ये मेरे दादा दादी हैं मेरे माँ बाप इलाहाबाद में हैं और ये मेरे मामा जी हैं मेरी उम्र बाईस साल की है और कविता भी बाईस साल की है आपकी उम्र क्या है कविता मेरी बहुत अच्छी दोस्त है कविता की कोई बहन नहीं है ओके सो बिगिनर्स आई होप इट विल बिल्ड योर कॉन्फिडेंस हियरिंग लॉट ऑफ सिंपल सेंटेंसेस इन इन अ पैराग्राफ सो लेट्स सी हु वुड लाइक टू रेज देयर हैंड एंड एट लीस्ट हेल्प मी um if you were able to got some or most of it scott scott ji how are you doing um yeah i think i got okay. most of it you got most of it amazing you want to help me here okay what 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 did you sort of i hope you didn't read it somewhere just listen to me <laughs> okay so um, what was your so it's uh um deepak is talking about his family he has a um a sister named um Vrinda i think mm -hmm. that's right and an older brother um i can't think of his name right off top 
संजीव 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 um he uh i don't know whether he was pointing out a picture or something but he said um his uh this is his um paternal grandmother and grandfather mm -hmm. um his uncle his um mom and dad live in alabad mm -hmm. um and then i think he might have said his age or mm -hmm. But then he asked, I think he asked another person their age. Kavit, um, you are your that's right. He asked someone's age. Yeah, not, not Kavita's age. Yeah, and then he said, uh, this is my good friend, Evita. And I think he said she does not have a sister. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's amazing, actually. <laughs> Great work there. So anyone else has any questions there? Anyone else? Anybody found it hard? And don't be shy. If you found it hard, just say it. Okay, um, because that will help me. I found it hard. Uh, which part? All of it. All of it? Okay. So let's work with me here. I'm going to just read it slowly. And uh, no, 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 no. Go on with other people. Um, I'll do some reading out, um, during the week and try and catch yeah. up. So I'm going to just read two or three sentences, just like two or three for you. Okay, just two or three. Yeh mera parivar hai. So the words were new or the sort of the construction itself is hard. Yeh mera parivar hai. Parivar is family. It's just the words. I mean, it's a lot of new words for me. I see. So maybe I'm assuming like in this case, when you say, when I say yeh mera parivar hai, parivar, it may come across as like a, a new word, like, you know, it's a, whether it is family or, okay. No worry. So just try to to follow along, like with 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 the with the group. And uh, what I would say is, like towards the end, we'll post the practice group as well, the link to the practice group. And as you join with the other, you know, uh, folks who are learning language from scratch, you'll be able to pick up. Yeah. So this is sort of the the beginners part. Um, in the second half, it's slightly hard, I think, but you still be able to follow along. Okay. In the second half, I want to talk about a grammar concept basically and how the how it works in hindi the agreement of verb um, in, um, in 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 different kind of sentences okay um, so this is like if you're completely beginners you know if you feel like a little bit hard on this if you feel this is a little bit hard um, just try to 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 hang in there i'll try to kind of break it down for you okay um, typically so it's basically this topic is called subject verb agreement typically you know when you say something or basic sentence in hindi or english basically you will say he reads a book he reads a book okay if a girl is saying doing it you will still say she reads a book and if a group of people are doing it, you will say they read a book. It comes naturally to most of you because it's uh, uh, your mother tongue. But you'll notice like in both the cases, he and she, it's, you will just say he reads a book and she reads a book. Now that's how you will say it. And it's very common because it's like a subject is there, you know, a verb is there followed by object. SVO because that's what English is subject, verb and object. Right? Subject is followed by verb and then object. Same thing in Hindi as you know is subject, object and verb. Okay? So when you say he reads a book, it will be vah and then book will come after that. So vah, kitab and then the verb. Then the struggle is what is the form of the verb? To read is Padhna. Okay, Padhna. Now, as you learn, you know, intermediate plus, you know that you will say Vah Kitab. You remove the Na. And if a guy is saying it is Ta. Okay, if a girl is saying it is T. And you say Endhe. 
okay so basically the verb is conjugated based on subject okay vah kitab padhta hai if a guy is saying it or vah kitab padhti hai if a girl is saying it okay so the verb agreement is the verb agrees with the subject provided there is nothing or no postposition after your subject okay when i say postposition think of them as like preposition in english such as you know your in for at you know um, all the the postposition that you are you, you sort of like you know uh, or preposition you heard in english right there is nothing after that after the subject is simply vah kitab padhta hai vah kitab padhti hai so scenario 1 when there is nothing after the subject no postposition after the subject the verb tends to agree with the subject no question so far i am assuming because it is straight forward and even if i were to write it in a different tense instead of you know um if i were to say um he went to india right i want to erase it how will i say rita ji he went to india he went to india that would be me ah go for it yes go for it one is the go go uh bharat mm -hmm. gara mm -hmm. go bharat gara gaya sorry gaya yeah. right so vah or go either way is fine vah bharat gaya if a girl is saying it then it would be go bharat gayi right vah no just say vah bharat or india gayi you see it's still getting conjugated uh based on the subject in all the scenarios in this one even though this was present indefinite this is past indefinite but in both the cases the verb that you have is getting conjugated based on the the subject okay this thing changes in scenario number 2 if there is a post position after the the scenario 1 in there is no post position after the subject scenario 1 scenario 2 is when there is a post position after the subject let's look at some of the examples of when there is a post position after the subject okay so those are something like that you learned like you know um instead of he reads a book let's say if it is something like he read a book in the past tense he read a book he read a book yesterday okay as you know um to read is a transitive verb but we are talking about scenario number 2 and we use a post position to say that so we say vah along with ne vah along with ne and it becomes usne okay usne kitab the verb is padhna but in the past tense it could be you remove the na and you put padhi 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 very good usne kitab padhi now in this case in this case in scenario number 2 if you notice how the the verb that you have here the form of the verb is basically following the object it's following the object okay um let's say if instead of kitab it was a chapter it was a chapter he read a chapter it could be para very good usne chapter padha okay 
um, if it was a story, it would be Pari. Pari. Okay. If it is a poem, it would be uh, Kavita Padhi. Usne Kavita Padhi. Okay. Um, usne, um, I'm thinking of some something which is where the object is masculine. Um, Usne Aapka Chehra Padha. Very good. Amazing. Usne Aapka. What is that? Vidyadi, you are killing it today. Usne Aapka Chehra Padha. What does it mean? Read your face. He read your face. Usne Aapka Chehra Padha. Chehra is face, right? So it's a. Usne Aapka Chehra Padha. Okay. So if, if it is bothering you, like what the heck is going on? It's nothing but in scenario number two, after the subject that you have there is a post position name so whenever in hindi following a subject if there's a post position the verb is basically agreeing with the object in scenario number one the verb was always following the subject but in scenario two when you know um, scenario two if you notice uh, the verb is agreeing with the object. Okay. This is scenario three also. Okay. Which is basically in this case, there is nothing after the object. Okay. After the, okay. I think, just give me one minute. Okay. After the object, there is no additional post position in scenario number two. Okay. So let's take, I'm still in scenario number two. Let's look at some more examples because nay, we have done it in the past as well right so name may seem like you know this is sort of your past indefinite um let's do something um let's see you have he or she likes say mangoes jan how would you say this one uh vaha mang mm -hmm. Am pasand hai. Okay, so something along after that, this is correct. Is it am? Mango is am or no? That's right, mango is am, that's correct. But there is a post Baha. position. Yeah, okay. Baha. Ko. Yeah. Which, yeah, very good. Which post position is that, Jan Priyanji? Uh, nahi pata. Somebody said it, he gave you a clue. Oh. It's ko. Ko, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, right. so it becomes, where plus ko becomes? Usko. Yeah, very good. Usko, just finish it, gently you know, usko. Usko aam pasand hai. Very good, usko aam. But, but why did we use usko? I, that I don't understand. Yeah, I'll tell you, usko yeah. aam. When you like something, is to that person, it is like. Yes. So, the who will benefit, like, you know, the, the recipient of that taste? Right. So, but the question is like, where plus ko, why it becomes usko? That's the question, right? Well, I guess I have two questions. So that, that's fine. I get that. But yeah, why did we use usko instead of vaha? Yeah. Who would like to answer that? As you say to something is liked. So the, is not, it's. Usko, I don't know, pasan hai. Whenever you say you like something, it's say to me, it is liked. So the ko is to, to me okay. or oh, to okay. him. To the subject, this is liked. This is okay. how it will get translated in, in Hindi. One is, on it one. Like, is it like muje? Like if I'm talking right. about to, to me, yeah. it's muje. But if it's talking about to you, like in your opinion or in your experience, hmm. usko. That's right. To you, tumko kya pasand hai? Mujko aam pasand hai. Tumko kya pasand hai? What do you like? Okay, okay. Right? Tumko kya pasand hai? Okay. So basically, going back to it, like scenario number two is basically when you have post position, you know, um, after the subject, the verb is agreeing with you know uh, the object. I wrote it in the the present tense, but let's say you have same thing in the past which is he or she liked mango how would you say that jumping ng now that you know that there's a ko uh in the past so usne 
उसको उस उसको आम पसंद था ओके सो इंटरेस्टिंग वन ट्राई अगेन उस उसको आम पसंद लेट मी एक्चुअली रिमूव इट टू मेक इट इजी ही लाइक द सो बेसिकली ही लाइक द हाउस मे बी टू मेक इट इजी फॉर यू एंड द वर्ड इज पसंद Anna, Hassan Anna, Anna to come. Yes, because it's the uh, it's along use along with Hassan, so it's not really it it, it it gives up its original meaning and it okay. transfers the better meaning to the Hassan. So usko am, usko am Hassan. It's not Anna ta. No, it's changes. Ah, it's, uh, it's not ayenge. It's Fast, fast, almost close. Oh, uh, I don't know. I give up. No, no. So, you, <clears throat> so you already said, like you know, now is not there. Ing is future tense. Past would be. Uh, Just like I went to India, Gaya, Gayi, Gay. Oh yeah, Gaya is Gaya tha. Yeah, so it becomes. Ah ah ah. Gaya tha. Gaya. Right. Gaya. No tha. I, you can you don't have to put tha here. Usko am pasand aya. Okay. The point here is after the subject there is a post position still here. Okay. Regardless of whether he is saying it or she is saying it, usko am pasand aya. Okay. If it instead of am it is strawberry, it would be usko strawberry pasand. आया, I I E. Very good, I E. उसको strawberry पसंद आई, okay? If it is smoothie, it would be उसको smoothie पसंद आई, okay? Um, if it was house, उसको घर घर पसंद आया, okay? उसको मकान पसंद आया, उसको painting पसंद आई, okay? If you don't remember anything, just remember just the principle when After the subject, if there is no post position, the verb is agreeing with the the subject. Okay. Um, Ashutosh. Yeah. I have a question. Um, yeah. Why are you using Hona in the present and Aya and Anna in the past? I was about to ask the same thing. Who who would like to answer that? I want some of the advanced students to 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 share that. So the question is like in the present you have hai here person hai in the past it changes to sort of like you know um, you're using the the additional part along with that i i i put my guess in the chat um I share it right, but uh, is usko am pasand tha kind of more about routine or like habitually Liked mangoes, whereas usko am pasand aya is like he liked mangoes in that instant. Yeah, yeah. Usko am pasand tha, you know. It's basically, you know, as Akhil ji, right? Akhil, you mentioned it. When I try, yeah, go for the, it. The 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 taste of the mangoes is coming to him. Yes. That kind of that is how the Anna comes in here. It's pleasant to him. Okay, so basically, what you're saying is you're using Anna because the taste is coming to the subject. Yes. If taste is going away from the subject, then if it is going away from the subject, Jana. then Jana. Yeah, I'm Jana. even more lost than I was. <laughs> I mean, why would that not be true in the present tense? Yeah. Right. So because this is. It's it's a very hard topic actually, you know. So if you're feeling a little bit hard, this is hard. Like yeah. this point, the 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 basic thing of I was putting across is like you know how the verb sort of structure works, where verb agrees with subject versus object. So I I know we are trying to mix multiple things, and we're probably running out of time as well. But we'll continue this topic, okay? But right now, just remember that if after the subject there is no post position. Verb agrees with the subject. That part is clear, right? He reads a book. She yeah. reads a book, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. 
it's also clear that if there is a post position after the subject the verb agrees with the object right yeah good good right just remember the third thing also and i'll come back to to this question that you asked okay the scenario number 3 when there is a post position both after the the subject and the object scenario number 3 is you have a subject as i said object and then verb but there is a post position after the subject post position and after the object also there is a post position then what is what happens to the verb does it really agree with the subject or does it agree with the object right um so let's give an example and then i'll i'll, I'll summarize it and then we'll continue we'll pick up from this topic so the example is let's say um john ne john ne um sara ko kitab okay john ne sara ko um let's say okay okay so i think instead of that i'm going to just use our example which is basically um ron ne machhiyon ko ron ne machhiyon ko machhiyon ko which verb let's say you want to use the verb to catch to catch is pakadna as you all know right john ne machhiyon ko which form of the verb should i use here does it agree with the subject or does it agree with the object very good vidya ji said it's pakadna okay vidya ji saying it's pakadna ji मछलियां um billion ko or let's say something masculine um sara ne kitabon ko kitabon ko then also it's pakda so basically the answer i'm going to give you answer okay the answer is when after the subject and object both of them have a post position the verb always agrees with the third person masculine singular that's what i said yep yep you are absolutely right i was not giving the answer right away it's always masculine singular <laughs> um um so basically uh, that's what it is that's why it's always pakda okay somebody try to give, somebody tries to put in some more examples here so that way it kind of makes sense to 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 everyone replace ron and machriya with something else okay i'm going to do it for you then. so let's say i saw uh sara okay so i saw sara would be maine sara ko sara ko and then jdg the verb would be the verb is dekhna you would say the past form of masculine singular maine sara ko dekha yes, jdg very good thank you sorry ashish ji sorry <laughs> yeah. go for it go for it Go for, it's okay share it you can say it with jaji maine sara ko dekha that's right and if you change it also sara ne mujhko then also it would be nahi dekha 
या ने मुझको नहीं देखा सो द वर्ड इज बेसिकली इट रिमेन्स द बेसिकली मैस्कुलिन सिंगुलर थर्ड पर्सन मैस्कुलिन थर्ड पर्सन फॉर्म बेसिकली मैस्कुलिन सिंगुलर देखा If, yeah. if everything in the sentence mm -hmm. every person object is feminine is it mm -hmm. still always um singular masculine at the end that's right so let's try it up sara ne okay. um let's say sara you are like you know we are talking about yourself and sara didn't see you you would still say sara ne which um, girl me mary ko nahi sara ne mary ko nahi dekha ha huh. yeah ऑब्जेक्ट Okay, you will see a lot more scenarios for that. Okay, but after the subject and object, there is a postposition. The verb agrees always with the uh, the third person masculine singular. Yeah. Any questions? I know we kind of ran over time a little bit, and some of you may be feeling like this was hard. But I wanted to cover it because it's been a while. We've covered these things in different settings when we learn about present tense. we always covered scenario ones when we learn about past tense okay we have covered scenario number 2 because ne is there and then we are using scenario 3 when we learn about the co blocker we probably you probably have seen us covering scenario number 3 because like you know there is a co after that okay um let me take a pause let's see if there are hard but absolutely okay uh, anyone else Uh, I have another question, Ashutosh. What happens huh? when you have two objects, one's indirect and one's direct? Yeah, amazing. That's a very great question. Um, we should do some scenarios. Uh, we should definitely put some more scenarios around around that next week. I know I'm I'm running out of time, so I want to be respectful. But either I'll respond to you on Slack, um, or I'll 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 cover it in the next class. Yeah, because that question will definitely that scenarios will definitely. Yeah. I mean, we've had this question in other <laughs> other situations, yes. Yeah. yeah. I still don't get it. <laughs> I, I know uh, Kelly ji wanted me to cover. We are a little bit running out of time, so I'm going to stop the broadcast. And thanks so much, folks, who joined on Facebook. Um, 